we're delighted to be joined by Fionn Ferreira. Fionn is a scientist, foodie chemist, anti-plastic pollution innovator, and was featured in Forbes 30 Under 30. He is absolutely incredible, and we're thrilled to have Fionn live from the Netherlands. Welcome, Fionn. Thank you. I'm so excited to be part of this today. I'm so glad to actually have made it online too, because Zoom was updating the whole day. Okay. Well, Fionn, thanks. It's great to see you again. You've been a great supporter of uh, the work that we've doing. And of course, as you know, as I just said, you know, we're massive fans of the amazing things that you do for the world. But Fionn, let me first ask you, could you tell us about your passion for food? Well, I'm a chemist, right? So I love uh, mixing things together and making new products. And of course, in the lab where I'm currently sitting, that can be in the case of, uh, you know, making new molecules and purifying those molecules and ultimately turning them into something that can hopefully change the world. But uh, when I go home, I think that this can also relate to food. So that's why at home, I'm actually doing pretty much the same thing. I have a little booklet where I write down everything I do in the kitchen, my lunches that I'm going to prepare. And then from that, I normally uh, make out plans and try and improve things. A bit like understanding what's going on in food. And as a result, I've kind of become very, very passionate into this space. So much so that I'm actually pitching a TV show at the moment around food. And um, yeah, it's something that I'm actively working on. I mean, on that note, could you tell us then specifically, you know, what you actually love doing with food? Well, I love eating it. No, I and mean, of course, okay. cooking is great too, but I think the eating is the pro, right? Yeah, well, me too. And I'd love to eat some of your food. But tell me, you know, Fion, when you actually eat an experiment and you do, you know, you create dishes, talk to us a little bit about some of those, some of those things that you actually do do. Of course. Well, uh, for me, creating dishes is all about highlighting um, different elements in the dish. Of course, because I'm so in the anti-plastic space and also in the environment space, I try to make my dishes as seasonal as possible. So for me in my you know week to week diet and particularly in what I make for my lunches, it's super important to go to the farmer's market, buy things without plastic in them uh, or packaged in plastic and then use those things to make what I'm going to make during the week. So often my food week starts with me literally going to the farmer's market on Saturday and finding whatever I can find. And sometimes that means uh, that I only have a week where I, I literally get to eat potatoes and some spices, whereas other weeks I have a cornucopia of different things that I can eat. So it really depends. The things then that I cook normally try and highlight the vegetables that are in season. So uh, instead of me trying to, I don't know, um, create flavors that might not be highlighting the vegetables that are in a place. I feel like it's always nice to try and let different things shine. As for me, the connection with nature and food is super important. So for instance, what, uh, what are my go-tos on those weeknights when I come back from the lab super late? It could be like uh, maybe a cheesecake um, with cauliflower and different things like that inside, um, highlighting, of course, the cauliflower or going all the way to eggplant. I feel like the most used vegetables in my kitchen at the moment are eggplant and courgette and fennel. Great, Fionn. Uh, and I, I, to anybody watching, please find out more about, you know, Fionn's work because the work that he also does ar around plastic is absolutely game changing. And uh, it's wonderful to be able to also talk to you about food today. And on that point, what does World Food Day mean to you, Fionn? Well, for me, I'm incredibly fortunate, right? I have access to food pretty much whenever I want to. And that is something that for me, I'm really thankful and fortunate too. So when I think of World Food Day, I always think of the people who perhaps don't have access to food or can't get to it so easily as me and are not as lucky to have, you know, farmer's market right around the corner. And that's why um, I personally, on World Food Day, like to support different causes um, that are making food access more available. But also, much more simple on my front, is every year on World Food Day, I actually normally go to my local, uh, it's a shelter here in the city of Groningen for homeless people, and I just help to cook. And that for me is something where I feel like I'm giving access to food to other people. And on World Food Day particularly, I just think about this resource that we all take for granted, almost all of us, um, and think about those people who don't have that resource. 
And for me, I think that's super important. Also, of course, highlighting this in conversations with um, different ministers and from a policymaking side is something that I always follow very much in food day as well. Fion, amazing. Thank you so much. Um, what are the greatest concerns do you feel around the issue of food? Well, for me, uh, I am not a populational scientist, right? So I don't understand how populations work that well. I'm not going to make any statements on that. But I do have concerns about the access to food, first of all. There's not enough food to go around. And I feel like making people like be able to get the food they need can be really, really challenging at times. So that concerns me. But from my personal standpoint and what my expertise is, is microplastics, right? And it's currently unspoken of, right? Where we see all these metrics that we're consuming about a credit card's worth of plastic in our water every single week. But I think it could be a lot more through the food that we consume. And therefore, I think growing things and monitoring soil health and the pollutants in soils is something that has not really been discussed on any global tables. Um, I think the use of chemicals on soil and the history of those soils and how that translates to food is something that worries me a lot. Because last time I checked an apple, it was full of plastic. I mean, how, how do you, you know, when you when you check these things, how do you actually do that? Is that something that you're doing in your labs? Yeah, so that's something that we can do here. We have, uh, I'm literally sitting like between two labs right now. And a technique called infrared spectroscopy allows us to understand different functional groups, the different groups attached to plastic molecules. And these are very, very unique. So when we can see a peak from one of these, it means that there's most likely plastic in a compound. Then we can, of course, cross-reference other techniques. But uh, yeah, for instance, for an apple, um, commercially grown apple, I'm seeing quite a lot of plastic in the flesh. So how is it getting in there? It's probably actually the plant assimilating that plastic. And at some point, we just have to, to try and, I think, first of all, measure these things to understand, is the food that we're eating really safe? And as a result, I feel more and more inclined to go back to my parents who live in rural Ireland where I grew up and just eat things that come from our vegetable patch, although I'm not sure if that's any better. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Well, thank you for some of those insights, uh, Fionn. Incredible. What actions can individuals take, you know, in relation to food and the manifestation of a more peaceful and sustainable world? Well, I think uh, something that is ultra important for all of us is to try and avoid using plastic packaging, right? The plastic problem is getting bigger. Every year, we're producing millions more tons of plastic, and most of that is in plastic packaging and single-use plastic. So the easiest thing we can do is to buy food and make food, which is coming from things that are not wrapped in plastic. How does this work for me personally on my personal scale? Well, I have the fortune uh, of being close to a market, but I think most people, particularly in Europe, have a market within about uh, five kilometers on average of their home. So I think people need to use markets more and bring containers to the market with them to get things filled in. Then I think next, what's super important is to look at our dry good consumption and how we can get that refilled as well. In the Netherlands, there's a company called Peter Pot, and I know they also operate sometimes in the UK uh, for certain product ranges, and they actually bring things in glass jars. Uh, they will refill the glass jar for you next time they deliver food by bike. Um, and I think that this refill, this refill culture is something that I think is not valued enough and I think is ultimately something that we need to bring in and perhaps even force consumers to use in the future to avoid this huge amount of plastic waste. Uh, if you think about what we see now when we go into a store, it's basically plastic everywhere in front of you. I mean, I'm literally in shock every time I go into a supermarket, right? And that is something that I think we really need to change. And we can do that through a tremendous buying power. Amazing. Thank, thank you, Fionn, for that. Uh, and I have to ask you, um, you know, if there was one thing that you'd like to see happen, one big change that you'd like to see happen, which is which is plausible, which is feasible, you know, within the next few years, what would it be? I think that it's really possible, and I wish for it to happen, that we do not package food or drink products in plastic anymore within 10 years. We've got the materials there to work for us. We've got enough people who want to adopt it. Really, at the moment, it's the cost that's an issue and implementing it for certain speciality goods. So I think if we in 10 years can avoid using plastic to package foods, and I think it is possible, but needs a bit of work, then I think I would be really, really happy. Can I ask you, um, you know, I mean, you know, coming from Ireland, 
you know, who's the one person when you think back and you you know in the, in your in your life, who's the one person that's really inspired you? Who's really motivated you? Who's made you believe that you can impact and change the world in the frankly incredible ways that you already have? For me, perhaps the what instilled this feeling of being able to change the world was the community that I grew up in. I grew up in the like the middle of nowhere in Ireland. It's called Ballady Hob. Actually, we always thought Ballady Hob is a town at um and, or sorry, we say Ireland is a town outside Ballady Hob, right? So Ireland is so far away from Ballady Hob that uh, Ballady Hob is in the middle of nowhere, and we've got a town for ourselves and a world for ourselves. And as a result, when I'm in Ballady Hob, I feel like I can very easily have an impact on the community of 300 people. That was me when I was younger. If I wanted to do a beach cleanup, I could literally use my parents' phone, post it into the WhatsApp group of the town, and half the town would show up to clean up the beaches. That's something that's really spectacular. So I felt like I could change the world on my town scale. And I thought, well, well if I can change the world in my little town, surely I can change the whole wide world uh, in a similar fashion. So as a result, I think growing up in the small town environment made me realize that people are easy to convince to do something as long as you can uh, have enough energy behind it and to have your arguments straight. So that then resulted in me uh, also having, okay, well, the issue that I was, I felt motivated to make change, but how could I make change? And for me, my change was in microplastic removal technology. And there I really have to thank my parents who just taught me that if you want anything, it's easy to get. All you have to do is build it. And that for me was a really great lesson that I could build any lab equipment I wanted for my home laboratory. Wow, that is absolutely, that's fantastic. What wonderful parents and what a great community. Um, so yeah, thank you for answering that. I appreciate it. So look, if people would like to support your work, find out more information about your work, where do they go? How can they do that? Well, I think there's one thing actually making a change like what I do and I'm inventing, building new machines from microplastics from water or even just cooking cool things. Uh, normally, I suggest people if they want to listen to how or learn about how um, I remove microplastics from water on a day to day basis. I post a lot about it on my Instagram, Fian.Ferreira, also uh, with the same handle on uh, X, TikTok uh, and different platforms like that and also LinkedIn. But for something uh, for you guys, I have something really special, which I've never really talked about on air before. And that is actually an Instagram that I've been working on for a really long time. That's my food Instagram. I share sustainable recipes, what I'm doing every week, um, and even travel guides of places that I go to find sustainable places to eat on a really regular basis. So it's fion.food. So F-I-O-N-N -N dot food. And there you can actually see my whole food life, which a lot of people have not yet discovered. So you guys will be the first. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. Fion dot food, F-I-O-N-N dot food on Instagram. Well, as soon as the show's finished, I can tell you, you're going to see me as a follower straight away. I have so much respect <laughs> for you, Fion. No, seriously, mate, you know, you're incredible. And, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing to be with you. So we wish you the very best of luck with your incredible journey. Keep changing the world. We're behind you. Thank you so much. And likewise, I love contributing to you guys. You can all change the world. Uh, just make sure that you keep the world uh, or keep your niche small enough so that you can make your change as powerful as possible. And then I'm super excited to see all your amazing ideas come out. And be sure to message me if you ever have any questions. Take care, Fion. Good luck, mate. Cheers. <laughs>